Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, this moment is really <laughs> complicated. We had a lunch interruptus. Um, so, my name is Alvaro Sanchez, and I want to talk to you about uh, something uh, that I did um, a month ago, a little uh, experiment, and it's to create um, a HipChat plugin um, to integrate with Jura and it's um, a great application. Um, how many of you are using HipChat at the moment? So only one. Nice. I presume the rest of you are uh, evaluating it or something like that, or just wanted to learn something new, <laughs> or just had lunch quickly. Um, uh, the, um, well, for the ones that uh, doesn't use uh, HipChat, it's a chat service for companies. Um, at our company, we use it uh, extensively, and I find annoying when uh, you know you're you're in a room with people. We also use Jira uh, for issues. Uh, so I find annoying when people um, create an issue for you and they just um, uh, send the issue key in the in the room. But then you have to copy the issue key. You have to go to Jira and search it. So I thought, why? Nobody has created something to, you know, to make this integration automatically so that uh, there is some kind of bot or whatever that is listening to the messages sent to the room and whenever an issue key is, uh, is sent, then search into your for the issue key and gives you the link and optional, optionally some details. So uh, basically I did that on a, uh, during a cold winter uh, a few months ago. Uh, and it's a great application. I will so explain you um, more or less how it works because it's really, really easy and really simple. Um, one thing to, to mention is that um, in the latest official uh, Jira hip integration by uh, Atlassian, they did exactly this. So uh, this particular use case is no longer valid but you can use this approach to do whatever you want. You can create bots for HipChat or, or whatever you want, because it's really, it's really easy. So um, I'll run the application in the back mode so we can see. In order to, so the way this works is that um, this has to be available, uh, available publicly because HipChat is making requests to a public URL or a set of public URLs to, to specify them. Basically, uh, there, there is a webhook that will, uh, uh, HipChat will call your application, this application in this case, on every message uh, uh, is sent to the room to specify. Um, so to make this work, I'm using something called Ngrok. Uh, Ngrok is, um, is a tool to create public tunnels. So this basically gives me a public URL, I can use it. So for a HipChat add-on, there is a URL or something called the uh, capabilities descriptor. Is that readable? I can make it bigger. Uh, the capabilities descriptor tells HipChat um, what are we going to do? What do we need? What permissions do we need? Uh, Etc. So, um, as a HipChat API consumer, I'm requesting this code to send notification because uh, this add-on, what it's doing is it's listening for messages sent to a room. Note that this doesn't work on on one-to-one uh, -one messages. Those are private. So, private conversations are not. Um, you know, you know, cannot read that at all. But in a room, then uh, you can. So uh, I'm listening for, for messages. For every message, I try to find an issue key with a, a regular expression. If I find it, I go to Jira and try to find the corresponding URL for it. Uh, and if I find something, then I retrieve the details, and I send a notification back to the room with the details. So uh, this is the, the screenshot you can see. We'll see a live demo after that. Uh, so for sending the messages, I need that scope, send notification. Uh, this is the URL that Jira will 
sorry, that HipChat will uh, request to configure the add-on because to configure the add-on we need to, um, or the application needs to know uh, the Jira um, uh, credentials to make requests to the Jira API. And uh, this is the webhook I'm defining so that I'm letting uh, HipChat know when uh, or essentially where uh, does he need to send uh, the webhooks on every, on every message. It's a room message in this case um, and that's all. So if I install this add-on here, I give the capabilities descriptor URL. Um, this is the information coming from the JSON you saw before. So if I click on install, um, this is a request sent to um, my controller. So I don't know if you can read that in the debugger, but we have something which uniquely identify that HipChat um, instance. Uh, that's uh, Walthody and uh, Walth secret. That's the authentication, uh, the way uh, HipChat handles uh, authentication. So it's using Walth and they're using uh, JWT as well. Uh, this means that if you want to create an add-on for HipChat uh, and you, can, you want to sell it, you can handle on a single installation multiple HipChat instances. So, you know, every customer with a HipChat instance can connect to your other in a single place because you can identify them uniquely by OAuthD. Um, this probably gave them out, so I'm doing more quickly now. So essentially, This is my single domain class. I don't have anything else. Um, I'm storing here the information coming from, from HipChat, so I know the capabilities URL, uh, also the, also the secret, uh, the room ID in case this has been only installed for a particular room. Uh, I'm going to enable for, for everything. And this information is not coming in the initial request that HipChat is sending me. This is only inform uh, information coming in a form this form that I'm presenting um, to, to the user, right? So what you see here in this dialog is a GSP or a controller plus a GSP rendered by my application directly and HipChat is embedding that information here. Uh, that's um, it's One of these guys, I think, is a configure controller. Yep. <clears throat> the configure controller um, is receiving a different request. I don't know if you saw the, the debugger, but it stopped the uh, second time and is rendering a GSP with information, right? That's simple stuff. So I'm going to put uh, information from a real installation. Something to, to consider here, so if I inspect uh, this form, I can see, I don't know if you can read, but that's a JWT. Um, if you're curious about JWT, what JWT is, I have another talk later on at uh, half past two, I think, uh, about JWT. Um, it's a way to transport, uh, basically, JSON information in a secure way, right? So. This information is signed with the uh, OAuth secret that I got on the initial request. So that when I receive that request, I can uh, basically decrypt it in a secure way, right? That's the way I can identify uniquely uh, who is uh, the HipChat instance uh, for this request. So I'm going to fill the form. What I'm doing here is basically um, given the request that JWT 
string, long string that I got, given that I'm trying to find the uh, tenant domain class. And if you look at this, this is essentially JWT. So this is a string, I try to parse it. Um, uh, then I, f I look for the um, element in the, in the database to uh, decrypt it with his secret, right? And if uh, I can basically verify it, then I'm done. Um, so that's done. Then, was tested, so I can type hello, great, conf, I think, I just mentioned that, then uh, this is the webhook. Yay, we got the notification, right? Uh, this is a link to, uh, to Jira. We can, see, we can see the status of the issue. We can see the assignee, uh, everything, right? How do we generate this? Actually, you can type whatever thing. You can type multiple issues. So this is the webhook request I got. If we look at the at the request, this is a JSON information that HipChat is sending me. It's essentially what the message is, what the uh, HipChat instance is, uh, whatever thing. So what I'm doing here is um, parsing. I parse the message. Well, I first make a request to the Jira API to know which version of Jira is, because if, if it's lower than six, then it's not going to work. Uh, I retrieve from Jira the uh, easy key regular expression, right? Uh, and if it's not available, then I pick a default one. You know, in Jira, you have like, you know, capitals, uh, dash, and then numbers, uh, but you can configure that. So I apply the regular expression uh, on the message, and for every um, match I got, then I basically build a piece of HTML and send to HipChat using the API. That's pretty much it. Uh, the, to send it to HipChat, well, there is an API, you can use it. Uh, and you can specify things like, for instance, the color of the, uh, you know, this is stripe band, and, um, um, you know, the message in this case could be plain text or HTML. And uh, the rest of the information is basically how to build the HTTP client for both Jira and HipChat. There's nothing fancy here. So uh, if you want to have a look at it in detail, that's the URL. It's gbot.herocoop.com. Uh, it's on GitHub. The source code is publicly available. It's only four controllers, one domain class, a couple of GSPs, and that's all. Um, so that's all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> is there any question? Yep. I really don't understand what's this going on. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, the question is uh, that you didn't understand nothing at all, right? Um, that's probably taking more than the time that I got here, so we can catch up offline if you want, and I'll... Yeah. Maybe you can read uh, this page. Uh, I think it's explained there, so... Yep. Yes. So the question is uh, how come this could be 
um, the name of our person or something like that if it's not but in the room, because it's not. Uh, and the answer is, uh, when you send the notification, uh, in some place you specify that name. I don't, it's probably on the capabilities descriptor. Uh, I think it's this name, the, w the one that is sent. It's not a real user. It's not consuming any license at all. Any other question? No? Then don't miss my next talk at half past two about JWT and WALF2. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alvaro.